Hey guys, in this video I want to talk about lasers. These are all lasers that I took out of CD and DVD drives. And they come in a variety of packages as you can see. My goal for this video is to have a working laser pointer that can burn stuff because that's always cool. So first we'll talk a little bit about what a laser is and then we'll get into explaining how to power one and then we can take apart some electronics and get a burning laser module out of it and see if we can put that in a case and uh, make it burn stuff. So what is a laser really? Well, if you want a basic overgeneralization, just how this is a diode and this is a light emitting diode, this is a laser diode. And so these are not too far from each other, but um, both the light emitting diode and the laser diode emit light. Hopefully the drawing is not too ugly, but um, in these actual cases that the laser comes in, or that you find them in, um, this is how they look on the inside. With the visible laser, you have it set up this way with uh, a common positive, uh, the laser diode on one side and a photodiode on the other side. And then with the infrared laser, so the invisible laser, you have a common negative and then you have a laser diode on one side and photodiode on the other. And you might be wondering, why is there a photodiode there? Well, to make a long explanation short, the laser diode is very sensitive. If you overvolt it, or if you make it suck up too much current, well then it burns out. So the photodiode is there just to act as a feedback, a um, light sensor, if you will, um, just to detect um, some of the light that's coming off the laser and to tell any circuitry that is connected on the outside that um, if the laser is okay or if the laser is burning up or if it's already dead. You know, it's basically the laser's life support, if you will. Maybe a better diagram is this one because here you can see like a side view of the casing and then um, here you have the laser diode and here you have the photodiode, so the sensor. And so the laser emits, you know, it's laser light and goes through a lens and some of that comes back into the sensor. And then you have external circuitry that can tell whether or not the laser is okay. Here's the circuit that I'm using just to test out the laser diodes. All right, so it's a little messy, but this is the setup. I have my multimeter on its voltage setting in parallel with the laser, and I have my potentiometer right there. And we can slowly turn it up, turn up the voltage, and we know that once we reach like about three volts, then we have um, 300 milliamps. So there we go, we're at 2.5 volts and uh, the laser is fully powered. I'm actually going to turn off the lights for this so you can see the laser uh, much better. It's cool because this multimeter has a setting where you can turn on the backlight. So there we go, the laser is fully powered and we're at 2.5 volts and uh, we can be certain that we are under 300 milliamps. To wire these lasers up correctly, Generally, they're wired in this configuration where the top pin is negative and the leftmost one is positive. Now some lasers, like this one, are infrared, meaning they're invisible to your naked eye. Now even when they're fully powered, you can't really notice that they're on. But there is a way to detect this infrared light, and it's in your phone. From my experience, most phones can detect this light because their camera filters don't block all the infrared. Using different cameras will vary how you see this light. As you can see, using just my DSLR camera, I can barely make out that the laser turns on. This is using my DSLR, and this is using my phone. I disassembled a common red laser, and this is the bare laser module. I wanted to show you guys how these naked lasers shine.
Now that we have some understanding of the laser diode, I want to start taking apart stuff. So let's start with this. This came out of a colored laser printer. The purpose of the laser uh, was just to place a positive charge on, on the drum that would be um, touching the paper and that's how it would transfer the image. The toner um, in, in the printer would be a little more negatively charged and it would be attracted to the positive charges that uh, the laser would put on the drum and th therefore transferring the image to the paper. Now here it says invisible laser radiation in class 3B laser product. So we may be looking at an infrared laser here. And a class B laser is any laser that's between 5 and 500 milliwatts. Now I've seen some laser engravers on eBay you can buy and they have a 500 milliwatt laser that they advertise. So that should give you some idea of what kind of laser we're working with. So there's one laser, and there's the other laser, and they both converge here, both shoot into this spinning um, reflector, and then they get reflected out to these mirrors and out the ports. These seem to be in modules. They already have one lens in front of them, and they have a heat sink with a PCB on it. So let's get these puppies out and see if we can power them. Hold up just a second. <laughs> look at look at this. Those there are two more lasers right there that were hiding from me. I didn't even notice them. And yeah, they go into that same spot too. All right, so I have it hooked up. Now let's slowly turn up the voltage and see what happens. It's at 2 volts right now. I'm starting to see something. Now it's at 2.3. 2.3 volts. We just reached 2 volts. And we're at 2.5. Those lasers in the printer weren't powerful enough to burn anything, so I moved on to a different laser module I already had. And this laser was just powerful enough to burn electrical tape. The beam needed to be focused, so luckily I had this case from one of the visible lasers, and when I took off the infrared laser from its original housing and put it in that case, the focused beam could really burn. But hold on, I want to express that it's very difficult to find a laser that has enough energy to burn. Even trying to take a laser out from the printer and putting it under a focusing lens did very little to help with burning. The visible laser was the same way. So I heard that my best chance was to open a Blu-ray drive and take out the laser from there. Even once I powered this laser with 5.5 volts and a few hundred milliamps of current, it still had a hard time burning anything. So I decided if I was going to make a laser pointer, it would be at least with this laser because it was right on the ultraviolet spectrum. And while it might not burn anything, it still would be a unique laser pointer. While I went through the effort of making my own circuits, both for powering the laser and charging the lithium cell that I salvaged from an electronic cigarette, this isn't necessary. You can order cheap lithium chargers on eBay rather than taking off the regulator from the Blu-ray board like I did. And you can order a DC to DC boost converter that I used as well to power the laser rather than building your own circuit. I had to modify the case to make space for the button and then try to make everything fit. The end result is this. 
a UV laser capable of making phosphors glow and curing UV resins. It would be interesting to make a DIY SLA printer out of this laser and a few moving parts. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Till next time, thanks for watching. Thank you.